Hello, friends, and welcome to Figure Study, where we appreciate the form in Transformers. Today, I'm taking a look at Studio Series Optimus Prime, mostly just to get it out of the way. I'm not a huge fan of this figure. There is a reason that I got it, and I'll go over that in robot mode, but uh, yeah, not a huge fan, especially since I already have Movie Masterpiece Prime, which is just a categorically better figure, but then it's also categorically more expensive. But yeah, I'm not really into this, but again, I will explain why in robot mode. Um, the truck is kind of small, which will, again, in size comparisons, we'll get to that later. I think what bothers me more than anything is the muted color tones, which I went into briefly when I was talking about Studio Series Ironhide. It's like, this silver is super, super, super bright in comparison to everything else in this truck mode. And that kind of bugs me. Not the silver, the fact that everything else is so dull is what bugs me. It's just a very desaturated and kind of lifeless looking color scheme. Like, yeah, it's Optimus Prime and they're trying to make him look a little bit grittier and more real world, I guess. I guess this is just speculation on my part, but like, the tones of this are so dull. It looks very muted all the way around except for those smokestacks which are just a very bright shiny silver and that's a nice silver it's just everything else is so dark and all the other what could be silver painted bits are like this dark gunmetal which isn't necessarily a bad color but like the, the entire front grille up along here it's all gunmetal which is a nice color but again it's it goes along with the muted tones of the rest of it. Like the blue and the red are just a little too dark for my liking. The gray doesn't really help things. It's just a very bland color scheme, really. That's a little disappointing. As I've said in the past, I'm also not a huge fan of this particular truck for Optimus Prime. I know it's movie accurate, but I just don't really care for this particular truck design. This I have not ever been able to get to uh, properly line up. It's always slightly off center, and that's kind of a shame. The only other bright spot in this entire thing is the teeny tiny Autobot logo on the uh, hood there. What is detailed is nice. I mean, like I said, they did like a nice kind of gunmetal for this right up here, painted the flames and some flames along the sides there, and they did paint the smokestack silver. They did do some detailing here, and some decent enough molding. One thing that I was noticing when I was looking at this actually before doing the video is the fact that this little red bit here that's part of a hinge for the transformation actually has the rivets and lights that are molded along this panel continuing on into that. So if that were painted, it would match up pretty nicely. So that's a pretty cool detail. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's a movie Optimus Prime truck. There's not much else I can say about it. Desperately in need of some paint here and there, like the back, the wheels, but there's there's some detailing. I feel like I'd be more into this if I were more into the Optimus Prime, the movie Optimus Prime truck mode, but eh, it's, it's not my favorite. And really, it's that color scheme that kind of does it in for me. Anyway, let's do those size comparisons real quick. And here he is with a Power of the Primes Deluxe, and as you can see, it's a pretty tiny truck. I'm not a scale junkie by any means, as I say all the time, but this is kind of sad how small it is. Let me get the Amiibo out of the way here. You can see longer than a Power of the Primes Deluxe by a little bit. Then when you factor in, like, thickness, it's, it's not that much different. So... Yeah, that's just, it's a little bit disappointing, I think. I imagine if I were more into scale, this would bother me even more, because it's, again, kind of tiny. But really, it's just not a fan of this truck mode, not a fan of the color palette that they went with here. I think the actual detailing that they've done is fine. I just wish the colors were different. Like, I'm fine with what's been painted and what hasn't, and the paint details that have been added and what haven't, considering, you know, the price point and budgets and all that. It's just that color scheme is so lifeless. Anyway, I think I've complained enough about the truck mode, so let's take a look at the robot.
And here we have Studio Series Optimus Prime in his robot mode, and again, it looks very desaturated and lifeless. The detailing here is nice, and we'll look at it a little bit more closely in a second, but this color scheme is just so toned down, and I just wish things were a little bit brighter. Like, either having the gray be a little bit lighter, or having the gray be a lot darker so that the red and blue appear lighter by contrast. It's just everything is so muddied with the tones they went with here. Also, I'm not a fan of the clear window pecs. It didn't bother me too much in the truck mode that it had clear windshields because things were so kind of crammed together it didn't really make things too apparent. But here, bring them in closer here, you can see like that clear plastic, it just shows the junk that's behind the transformation here. Like it's just, yeah. I mean, heck, this window is looking into, this fake window is looking into the window of the truck cab. I just don't, I don't like that they made that clear really wish that they had done something a little bit different with that. And you also have the uh, side mirrors here that are just clear plastic now. And that's kind of... Uh, but going down to the feet, you can see that, you know, there's plenty of nice molding. There's a lot of detail here that would look nice if it was painted, and I think would look better overall if it was a different shade, but that's what they went with. And it's Movie Optimus Prime. I mean, there's not a whole lot I can say about it. They do a decent enough job of, like, faking the uh, chest area here. Or not chest, the stomach area here. I just, I don't like the clear windows. I'm not a fan of this thing right in the center, but this doesn't bother me as much as the clear windows because the clear windows really stand out. The arms have some nice detailing. These don't peg in. Like, I wish these pegged in somewhere else or stayed pegged in more solidly, but they really don't like staying in on mine. But, you know... Molding's nice, I can give it that. The face is a nice enough face. My problem with this is the paint that they used. It's too dark. That gunmetal for the face is way too dark. I am not exaggerating when I say that I actually didn't realize that Optimus Prime had his face mask on until just now, because this is the first time I'm really like getting a close-up look of the face. And looking at it from a distance, it's just a dark gray mess. There's barely anything there. You can barely even make out his eyes. And when you've got this like dull blue with the dull blue plastic behind it and then that gray, it's just, it's just a dark mess. I just really wish that they bumped up the contrast here, either made the blues and reds lighter or made the grays a lot darker. Except there, that is still too freaking dark. Oh, it's move him back here for size comparisons, but before doing the size comparisons, uh, I want to say the reason that I actually got this figure, despite not actually caring for it very much, is, uh, well, it's actually, there's two reasons. Stand up straight. There we go. It's two reasons. First one being, I actually think the transformation on this guy is fun. I like the transformation. It sort of reminds me of Evasion Mode Prime, although I've never actually owned Evasion Mode Prime, so technically it reminds me of the uh, Wei Zhang oversized Evasion Mode Optimus Prime. But I like the transformation on that. This reminds me a lot of that. It also seems similar to the uh, Transformers Prime First Edition Optimus Prime, which is a figure I always wanted to get my hands on, and the transformation looked neat, but I just never got around to it. So this kind of seems to borrow from both of those, and it makes for a fun transformation. I just... Uh, I, I have fun with the transformation, but I don't really care for the figure's aesthetics itself. I think, like I said, the colors are way too muted. And the truck mode, you know, it's got the same kind of color problem. And even my non-caring about scale self thinks it's a little too small. The other reason why I got this was because I was watching a video on this guy by Caked Up. And Caked Up made mention of the fact that there is apparently a rumor going around, which as far as I know is still just an unsubstantiated rumor, but a rumor that they might be doing a Studio Series Jetfire with the intention of having him combine with Studio Series Prime here. That could be completely false. Chances are it probably is. But I was tempted enough by the idea of having a uh, Jetfire Prime combo for Studio Series figures that I was just like, you know what, screw it. They had him in the 
target when I was walking around and it's kind of an impulse thing, so fine. If Jetfire never comes out, then I'll probably get rid of this guy. Well, probably nothing. If Jetfire doesn't come out, I'm definitely getting rid of this guy. But I'm going to be hanging on to him for now, just in the event that they do end up releasing a Studio Series Jetfire. Anyway, for size comparisons, here he is with a Power of the Primes Deluxe, and he's definitely tall. I mean, I will give it this, aside from the enjoyable transformation and that rumor of the Jetfire thing. That tiny truck opens up into a fairly big robot, all things considered. So that's pretty cool. And what the heck, I recently reorganized my collection so my Optimus Prime shelf is closer, hence now it is within easy reach, so I can spontaneously decide to do this comparison. So let's readjust the camera here so we can see there is Studio Series Prime next to not Movie Masterpiece Prime, this is actually the Legendary Toys uh, LT-02 knockoff version of Movie Masterpiece Prime, which is basically the same figure with a better paint scheme, better colors, and better engineering. It's actually interesting because this is the same model of Prime in terms of like the design. Like He's got the chest windows, he's got the kind of blue love handles thing, all that stuff going on. And you can see just how much better this figure pops. I mean, I totally understand that this and this, it's kind of an unfair comparison, especially when you consider price point. But just look at the general color selection here. And the blues and reds on this guy were actually darker than the blues and reds on the official movie masterpiece. So just imagine if these blues and reds were that color. And imagine that those grays are a little bit lighter. I feel like this with this color scheme would look a lot better. But yeah, I just, you know, I hate to be so negative about it, but I'm just not super into Studio Series Prime. He's just a little bit too kind of muddled for me. And I mean, it's, you know, if the Jetfire thing turns out to be true, I think that could be really cool. Part of me is tempted to do some paint work on this guy, but I just wish they had done things a little bit differently. But anyway, I think that's enough carrying on about how disappointed I am with this figure. What do you all think of Studio Series Prime? I'm pretty sure I'm not alone in thinking that that transformation is legitimately enjoyable, but I am curious how everyone else feels about the paint scheme, color choices, and the fact that it does seem a little bit strange to put this particular version of Prime out so quickly after the movie masterpiece version came out. Because again, they're the same exact Prime in terms of design for the character. I feel like maybe they should have gone with a different movie version of this guy, but then I suppose how many other choices would they really have had? Because they couldn't really do Last Night because the Last Night Voyager just came out, what, like less than a year ago? I don't know what goes on in Hasbro's meetings, but I feel like this guy would have been a lot better if he had come out sooner, like a year or two before this. But as it is, it's a, a little bit of a shame. I'm getting off track. <laughs> I'm supposed to be asking you all what you think. Has anyone else heard the rumor about the uh, Studio Series Jetfire and how much weight would you give that? I mean, you know, it's a rumor. I'm not inclined to think that it's true because I don't want to be disappointed, so I'm sort of assuming that it's just a rumor and it probably won't end up coming out and then I'll just be a little disappointed and I'll get rid of this guy, but it'd be really nice if it did actually happen. And I know I've asked this before in other Studio Series videos, but in terms of other f characters from the movies, who do you think you'd like to see make a Studio Series appearance? I'm actually kind of curious to see if they could bring back any of the Constructicons, because I know they did Rampage wrong, technically, because he's not supposed to have legs. <laughs> he's just supposed to have the bouncy jackhammer thing. But I thought Rampage looked pretty darn cool as like a centaur crab thing. And I'd be down for like a Studio Series Demolisher, Studio Series Mix Master. That would be really cool. Not that I think that the Voyager necessarily needs an update, but like that truck butt's a little bit disappointing and it didn't really need to be a triple changer. Studio Series Long Haul would be really cool. Actually getting Studio Series figures for the Constructicons that we never got like full size figures for. I forget the name of the one. Um... It was one that got like a Legends figure that came with that set that would combine to make Devastator, but never got a standalone release. It was like a, a long flatbed truck. I thought that was like a really cool robot design and never got that. So that'd be cool to see as a studio series. 
But whatever your thoughts, feel free to chime in down below. I always enjoy hearing from you all. And while you're at it, also feel free to like or subscribe. Any of those things would make me a happy Rob. And remember, art is more than meets the eye.